It's always great to have you on board. What did you make of the session today? So quiet. $3 billion worth of stock being traded. We've got school holidays here in Australia, as well as China being on holiday. So extremely light volumes going through. Having said that, though, the Australian market continues to be very resilient. We did see the U.S. are down or flat. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 0.4%, while the S&P 500 was flat. And yet the Aussie market managed a gain of 0.4%. Now, part of that was due to the material space. We did see a strong bounce back in commodity prices overnight. In fact, gold prices is up 2.7%, and that saw stocks like Newcrest Mining gaining 3.2%, and the material sector receiving a little bit of a lift. But all in all, it was pretty quiet. We did, however, see some companies reaching 52-week highs, and these are companies that have continually been uh, seeing some good performance over the past few weeks. One of them is Warrnambool Cheese, which continued to gain today. We also saw Kathmandu reaching a 52-week high, Aristocrat Leisure, as well as Sky New Zealand. Um, so altogether, a quiet day on the market, but we did see some outperformance from some of the stocks. Yes, very much in the spotlight t today. Uh, shares in the end closing down just shy of 10.5%, but we saw really plastered across uh, headlines today about uh, corruption allegations. We have heard corruption allegations um, with Leighton's before, and really these allegations came to the forefront back in um, early 2012. And just looking at Leighton's share price over a number of years, this is what Leighton's share price uh, from 2011 looks like. And you can see that early 2012, we did see Leighton's share price dropping quite substantially. Now, it wasn't really due to those uh, uh, bribery allegations coming through and those corruption allegations, but more to do with problems, to do with the desalination plant as as well as the Queensland uh, airport link. Um, so Leighton's has been through quite a lot, but the fact that we are seeing this coming back to the forefront, that uh, there are allegations that people right at the top and the executives did uh, know about um, what was happening there. And in particular, just having a look at a $732 million contract and a potential kickback of $42 million to Iraqi officials, which is, has really been hitting the headlines. I guess in terms of the impact to Leighton's, um, there had already been uh, concerns about the board and corporate governance, and that really brings that to the forefront. Of course, there's also reputational damage and then the possibility of damages as well. And it comes at a time when Leighton's cash flow is looking weak. Um, you know, one of the things that the market has concerns about is accounts receivable, especially that coming through from the Middle East as well as Indonesia. And that's been a hot topic for a while there. So it does come at a time when Leighton's is looking vulnerable in terms of its underlying business. And unfortunately, it's not a positive story. And we actually did see the losses accelerating throughout the afternoon. Mm. Julia. I guess if we have a look at Leighton's, it's Australia's largest contractor and it has such a diversified order book. Um, it, it's in, it operates in different countries, mostly in Australia, but also it's, it has exposure to Indonesia, the Middle East, as well as uh, in India. So it does have its fingers in a lot of pies. I think a lot of the bad news for Leighton's is probably behind it and that's yeah. a massive amount of write downs that we've seen uh, with those huge uh, contracts uh, over the last few years. So the fact that we have seen a lot of of that um, having been worked through and um, gone now, those projects are pretty much completed, is a positive for Leighton's. And I guess in terms of Leighton's, we are looking at you know just a few problem areas in terms of weak cash flow and in terms of receivables. I mean, there are ongoing problems for Leighton's, but really we do want to see a bit more confidence, I think, coming to that contracting area. And Leighton's, you know, in the past, it's been marred uh, by. I guess the way it's been pricing those contracts and the problems it has had in delivering on those big contracts. So just watching Leighton's very carefully. I'd be a little bit cautious getting into the stock at this stage. But having said that, you know, it is when a company does manage a big turnaround that you see the biggest uh, jump in its share price. You only have to look at companies like Blue Scope Steel, which were an absolute basket case and have managed to turn around to see where a lot of the share price appreciation comes. But it is um, at, the, at a much higher risk than um, the, the usual course of business. Julia, how do you think the, uh, this, the, this news on, on Leighton's will impact its opportunity with the new federal government? It's made a lot of commitments to new infrastructure big infrastructure projects, which is Leighton's um, sort of forte. Uh, do you think that sort of counts them out of that or do you think it'll have no effect? 
I think there's been a lot of optimism because we know that the new government is looking at some key infrastructure projects, especially in the area of roads, and that would have been an area that uh, Leighton uh, has a lot of expertise in, um, in terms of both ownership as well as in terms of construction. Um, so we're just watching that reputational damage and if that is going to have an impact on its future order book and the contracts that it does uh, bid for. So we're watching how this unfolds uh, very carefully and I guess it's a reputational damage and it's a question of, you know, can you really overcome that uh, reputational damage in a short period of time or is it going to be a much longer story? And it's probably going to be a, a, a bit of a longer story there in terms of latent. So just a bit of cautiousness for some of those longer-term investors. Julia, I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, a piece of news that will happen just about an hour or so or, or go. As expected, Communications Minister Malcolm Turnbull announcing former Telstra and Optus boss Ziggy Switkowski will be the chairman of a smaller NBN Co board. Um, does this, do you think, have any implications for Telstra? Both, well, Ziggy has worked with David Thody, the current CEO of Telstra in the past. Do you think, you know, there'll be much impact? I think there could be a potential positive impact for Telstra shareholders. As you mentioned, David Thody has been at Telstra since 19, uh, 1999. And if we have a look at Ziggy uh, Sikowski, he's, he was there from 2000. He was there from uh, 1999 to 2004, and David Thody was there from 2001 to the current time. So there was a significant overlap there. We know that uh, the current government, that they have already flagged a number of changes to this NBN project. And really what we're probably going to see from this point on is a strategic review first, and then an audit, as well as a, a cost-benefit analysis. And if we have a look at the differences that we are expecting to come through, I think there's three key things that we're watching. One is that we are expecting to see a reduced scope in this MBM project. We're expecting to see fibre to the premises make up about 22% of this project and fibre to the node to make up about 71% of the project. And this is different from the previous government which was aiming for fibre to the node for about 93% of the project. So that's probably going to be uh, one of the impacts that we're looking at. Secondly, we're looking at a reduced um, reduced building costs and reduced building spend. The previous government was looking at about the $37 billion mark. The current government's looking at around about the $20 billion mark. And the third impact is the faster rollout. And this may be the biggest impact to Telstra shareholders because, of course, we know that there's an $11 billion um, negotiation um, and, and uh, a prize for Telstra that's been negotiated. And it's a question of how quickly our Telstra shareholders will have access to those funds. Um, so it looks like under the current plan, it is very much a copper-based um, broadband <laughs> technology which does utilize the existing copper in infrastructure that Telstra has so there is a potential impact there but probably not a huge impact to Telstra shareholders at this stage.